It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's schools where we test scientific IQs. Play along and test your own and see if you can match wits with the six young men who are gonna be playing our game today. And of course, our Science Bowl game has been around for a long time, 35 years here in Prince George's County Public Schools. And almost all of that time we have been in the studio where I'm standing right now. But because of the pandemic, we are coming to you via Zoom, we're recording on Zoom, and all of our students are safe in their homes while I am here in the studio. A lot of things have stayed the same. We still offer our students 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. A uh, couple changes. They don't have to press buzzers. Yes, we have two separate teams coming in, each getting 18 questions apiece, different but of equal difficulties equal difficulty and at the end of the game today the team with the highest score will come back to play our game again and advance perhaps to the semi-finals. Something else that has not changed is we have kept the original six categories that we choose questions from and if you're not familiar with their program here are those six categories. Okay Mr. Z here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems. We'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing, and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history, and science in the news. All right, it is now time to meet our first team. They won their first game and they're here today to see if they can advance in our competition. Let's meet the team from Rogers Heights. Let's say hello first to their captain and the captain is right there, Jonathan. Jonathan, wave to everybody if you would. Fine young man and next to the Christmas tree is Juan. Juan, our fourth grader. Jonathan is a sixth grader, and another sixth grader on the team is Adiel. Adiel, wave to everyone if you would. Nice to have you guys here. All right, let's get started. Our green things category is first. Three questions for you, a five, a 15, and a 25. Here's your five-point question in green things. You know the Christmas story, the three kings who visited the manger. They brought gifts. They didn't have electronic toys. <laughs> they brought gold and two plant products, frankincense and myrrh. Both of those substances are this kind of stuff that comes, this kind of substance that oozes from the bark of two trees that grow in Arabia. What oozes from the bark? Any ideas? Maple? Maple? Yeah. I maple. You guys think maple? There's a small chance it could be maple. Uh, oil? Well, you got part of it right. Uh, it's sap. You were thinking maybe maple sap that they make syrup from. It's the sap that comes from the bark. And that is what frankincense and myrrh are. Uh, substances that were used much long time ago. Let's go to the 15 point question. People trying to lose weight often avoid carbohydrates like potatoes and bread and rice. Not so much because they contain sugar but rather because they contain too much of this. Protein? Calcium? Starch. Starch is the right answer there. The other carbohydrate other than sugar. All right, let's get this 25 pointer and get some points in the green things category. You know, when you, I don't know if you guys garden, if you plant seeds, if you grow flowers or vegetables, but if you do, Sometimes you think, am I putting the seed in the right way? Maybe I put it in upside down. Well, it doesn't matter which way you plant a seed because the hypocaudal, the new shoot, will grow up toward the light, whereas the radical, 
the new root will grow down into the ground toward gravity. We call that movement toward light phototropism. What do we call the movement toward, toward gravity? What kind of tropism? Hey, the ideas, Justin? Hey, well, what I know so far, like it could be the opposite because in, because up and then down. Hmm. A tough question. Photo means light. That's why it's phototropism. And gravity is geotropism, as in geology. All right, no points there. Let's see if you can get them in the zoo. Zoo prayed for five points. You know, it still seems odd in December to see robins, those familiar red-breasted birds, hanging around Maryland. Since in the past, when weather got colder, they did this to find warmer places to live. Um, migration? My, migration? Right. Exactly right. Yes, those birds used to migrate. And now it's so warm around here that they figure, hey, we can just stick around here and still find enough worms to keep us alive. Let's go to the 15-point question. It's a visual question. Look at the picture. You know, if you watch SpongeBob SquarePants, you know that they have some weird creatures there, one of which is a sea bear. <laughs> like a seahorse, they have a sea bear. The Crudes family of the Neanderthals had a bear fish. They also had a creature that was a mix between a bird and this fish, a piranha. Well, if you bred together a bird and a piranha, or a bear and something that lived in the sea, like a whale, what kind of H initial creature do you get when it's a mix of two different species? We call that what kind of H initial creature? An ideas? A um wait, wait, A or Almost. H? Homo species? Homo species. Yeah, two species that don't normally breed together, like a tiger and a lion. If you breed them, you get a liger or a tiglon. You know, they're strange creatures. And we call that kind of creature that's a mix, what H initial name? It's called a hybrid, a hybrid. Let's move on. Here's a 25 point question in the zoo. You've all heard of the wolf in sheep's clothing. The wolf put the sheep so he could get close to the sheep and eat the sheep for dinner. Well, lions in Africa will often roll around in the poop of zebras so that the zebras can't see them, literally. They can't smell them. So that is, with the wolf in sheep's clothing, that is a kind of what? Where you disguise yourself against another creature. Or if you can camouflage? do it. Camouflage? Camouflage. That's right. Chemical camouflage. 25 points. You got it. Who said that? They said it first. All right. Well, you're both sharing the 25 points. Nice going. Both of you guys, Jonathan and Juan. All right, let's do your body system questions. While tongue rolling is an ability controlled by a dominant gene, it's not nice to stick your tongue out, but if you can do this, what I'm doing, can you do that? Mm. It rolls up on the side. If you can do that, it's, there you go. That's good, that's due to a dominant gene. Well, if these body parts, also known as pinnas, Listen, P-I-N-N-A-S. Your body has pinnas. If these are attached to the side of your head, because normally they're not, it's caused by a recessive gene. Think about something that can be attached or unattached that is on your head. It could be hair. Yeah, it could be hair. And like, we go here? It could be hair. Could be. But a muscle or it's the part that you're using right now to hear my voice your ears, ears. Oh. your earlobes because this part right here some people it's attached to their skin it's caused by a recessive gene if it swings free like this it's due to a dominant gene let's go to 15 points multiple choice Pathologists who are doctors who perform autopsies on people who have died have found blood clots throughout the bodies of COVID victims, including in this part of the brain that controls balance. 
Is it cerebral cortex, the medulla, or a cerebellum? Which of those three parts of your brain controls your balance? Your cerebral cortex, your medulla, or your cerebellum? I think it's the cerebral cortex, because if you think of cortex, it would be like coordinating, but I don't know what you are. You know what, Jonathan? That's actually a reasonable question, because like when you balance, like, you know, you even out like weight. Yeah. I like yeah. how you parse that because core and coordination go together. But it's actually, it's, it looks like a walnut. It's at the back of your brain. It's called the cerebellum. Cerebellum. And that's the one that helps you to keep your balance. All right, let's do the last question of the game, our last question of this opening round. All right, let's see. You know, I always tell students preparing for science both to learn prefixes and suffixes. Let's see if you did that. The medical term for high blood pressure is hypertension. The medical term for low blood pressure is this tension. Uh, What's the opposite? Lower blood tension? Hyper. Lower Hyper tension? tension? Wait, no. Hyper tension? Hyper tension? Yeah. The opposite of hyper, H-Y-P-E-R. -R. Low tension? Wait. It's called hypo. H-Y-P-O, hypotension. All right, that means you end this first round here, Rogers Heights, with 80 points. See you in a couple minutes, guys. Good luck. It's now time to meet the team from Whitehall Elementary School out there in Bowie, and they too, like the Rogers Heights team, have won previously, and they're here now to see who advances in our competition. Let's meet the team. Let's see our Captain Brad. Brad, would you wave to everybody, please? Fine young man out there. And also we have Jake with us today. Hey, Jake. And he also has behind him what I have behind me in the, just the corner of our traditional game board here on the science board. And let's see, and Hayden is here. Hey, Hayden. Hayden, you're, you're glowing back there. You've got the lights on your Christmas tree. It's looking good out there. All right, guys. Uh, you do so well on this game. Let's continue that tradition. Let's go to the green things questions. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Here we go. Green things for five points. Charlie Brown's Christmas tree was pretty pathetic. Having practically none of these that evergreens count as leaves. Needles. Needles. Needles is right. You got it. For 15 points. You know, it's recommended that you cut an inch off the bottom of your live Christmas tree. Hey, I don't know if you did that. I don't know if that's a live tree, but live trees, they say cut at least an inch off the bottom. That helps the tree to take up more water. The water moves up the tree, defying gravity, by what process it has the same name as the smallest of your blood vessels. Capillary action. Capillary. Capillary action it is. Boy, you guys knew that one cold. Perfect. I have a picture for you for the 25-point question in the green things category. And it's almost like you can't see what I want you to see. If you look very carefully in the center, very carefully, you will see a plant known as fritillaria. To protect itself from being picked by people, which it has been for generations, this plant has evolved a gray color to help it blend in with the rocks and the soil where it lives. There is a gray flower amongst those rocks. The camouflage may work. It's probably working on you right now. But it also has a couple of drawbacks. If you're a plant and you are a gray plant, what might, what might happen to you as a result? Something not so good. You may get less pollinators. Yeah. Less what? Less pollinators. That's pollinators, absolutely right. They can't see you. And also, photosynthesis is impaired because there's not a lot of green space, a lot of green leaves out there to uh, let the sun fire up the chlorophyll. Nicely done. Thank you, Hayden. Let's go to the zoo. Zoo prayed for five points, guys. The men putting up the huge Christmas tree in New York's Rockefeller Center just a few weeks ago got a surprise because they found one of these wise birds looking startled among the branches. Is it owl? Owl. Yeah, there's a little owl in there. And it had made the whole journey from New York, upper New York State, and probably wondered, what am I doing here in Rockefeller Center? They were able to repatriate it. They took it back home for 15 points in zoo. 
You might say the Triceratops dinosaur and the modern day rhinoceros are kind of kinfolk in that both are these kinds of animals that are strictly plant eaters. Herbivores? Herbivores. Herbivores is right, yes indeed. Good answer there. Thank you, Jake. We also would have accepted vegetarians. For 25 points, I have a picture for you. You know, these are some of my favorite creatures, the lemurs of Madagascar. While lemurs can leap between trees in Madagascar, and various apes like orangutans can swing through trees, except for the monkeys in the Wizard of Oz, no members of what order of mammals that includes monkeys and lemurs and orangutans can actually fly. So what do you guys think? So I'm looking for the name of the order of those creatures. All belong to what order of creatures? The monkeys and the lemurs and the orangutans for 25 points. I think it's primates. It is primates. Perfect answer. 25 points. Nice going. Three more questions for you before we take our first break. Body assistance for five points. An ever-lengthening proboscis was the fate of this character every time he told a lie. Nokio. 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 That is right. Yep. For 15 points, a statolith is a tiny crystal in your inner ear that, if disturbed, can make you lose your what? Balance. Balance. Balance is right, indeed. 25 points in body. The COVID vaccine, like the flu vaccine, is given intramuscularly into your arm muscle. But some medications are injected intravenously, which means the medicine goes directly into your what? Vein. Your vein is right. You got it, Hayden. Venus and vein, that's the derivation. Nicely done. Great round there for Whitehall. That means, gentlemen, you end this first round with a whopping 185 points. Super job. It is now time to bring back the team from Rogers Heights and find out about these young men. If you've been watching our show this season, you've already met Juan and our captain here, Jonathan. Adiel is new to the team, but let's start with our captain and Jonathan. Tell me what this has been like for you. Is this kind of what you imagine Science Bowl to be? Yeah, since mostly in the TV shows that I watched in the previous years, there are usually be six categories, green thing, do great, body system, let's get physical, potpourri, and dateline. And now it seems like the same thing. So yeah, it's going expected as I think. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad. And I hope you're enjoying yourself. We really like having you here. Uh, I like how dressed up you are here. You know, uh, you look like the captain, you act like the captain, and you were telling me uh, on another show what you were thinking about for a career. Tell us again. I would like to be a musician. Yes. And what do you play? What instrument do you play? Or instruments? I play trumpet. Trumpet, yeah. How long have you played it? I played it for, for fourth and fifth grade, so for three years now. Wonderful. Do you, do you consider yourself pretty good? Yes, my teacher gave me the recommendation of Hyattsville for because she thought I would be good in going to Hyattsville. That's great. They recognize your talents, and Hyattsville is a performing arts school, and it sounds like it could be a perfect fit for you. Uh, not only are you a good trumpeter, but you're a good science player, too, here today. Nice to have you back. Let's talk to your teammates here. You. Let's go down and see Juan. Juan next to that uh, Christmas tree, and he is uh, he's only a fourth grader. Boy, you have really impressed people at Rogers Heights. Here you are representing your school as a fourth grader. Uh, you know your stuff. You must be a great student. What is your studying routine? Do you have a certain time that you mark out for when you do your work? Yes, actually, I do. When is that? Uh, um, like right before the bed. When uh, like right before bed, I like study a lot since that's where I mostly remember things. Like during the day, I kind of forget sometimes, so I mostly do it at night. Well, see, so you've worked it out. And that's, see, that's the mark of a good student and your discipline. And, you know, some of these questions we're asking, they're pretty tough. And here you are as a fourth grader, and you're coming up with some of these answers. I'm very impressed, and I know the viewers are as well. 
You keep up your good work, young man. All right. And what do you want to do someday? Tell us. Um, I was thinking about me being a meteorologist. We were talking about that, too. Yeah. Would you like to be on air? Would you like to do it on television? Yes. I think you'd be good. You have the poise. You have the nice personality. Go for it, young man. And let's talk to your other teammate, Adiel, who is on the show for the first time. And why did you want to do this, young man? Uh, well, I wanted to be in science school because, like, since I was young, like, I, I always seen, like, the kids going to the group and, like, before school, they had the announcements. All the science school kids stay after school to go to the program. And I started watching it. And I had a friend who go to science school. I had an aunt who went to science school once. And uh, I think science school is really cool. And I well, just... We think you're pretty cool for saying that and for being such a big fan here. And it's nice that you're here. And uh, yeah, sometimes uh, students say, this is like Jeopardy for kids. And it is in many ways. And you're trying, I only wish we had some real money to give away to you, but you're earning a lot of honor and respect from people watching. What do you want to do someday, Adiel? As a, as a um, well, I, I would like to be a businessman. I'd like to go to college for business and management. Well, I might do a skateboarding company because, well, right now I'm into skateboarding and I'm pretty good. And I'd like to also study the human foot because like, you know, better techniques for making new tricks. That's very smart. If you're going to be a professional skateboarder like Tony Hawk, uh, you're going to have to know a lot about pediatrics uh, on, and understanding the feet. And uh, it sounds like, yeah, you've, you're, you've got a good brain. You know, you're already thinking ahead and you're making some logical choices there. Nice to have you here. Let's get back into the game, gentlemen. Let's go to the let's get physical questions. Let's see how much you know about the solar system. Physic let's get physical for five points. The star believed to be the star of Bethlehem can be seen this December between what two largest planets? It's been on the news. You step outside, you could look up in the southwestern sky, and there were those two big planets, and right in between was a star, the star of Bethlehem. Name the two biggest planets for five points. Um, Mars and... Do you guys have any idea on the second one? One of them would be Mars. Mars and Venus would sound, but I don't know. The biggest planet is Jupiter. Yeah. And the second one was Neptune? One with the rings. Oh, Saturn? Saturn? Oh, Saturn. Saturn were the answers there. All right, for 15 points. Do you guys like to go camping? You ever go camping? Yeah, we went to camp. Yes, if you go camping, one of the neat things to take with you is something called a spork. It's a spoon and a fork combined. It's kind of neat. Well, one of the best is made of a chemical element with the symbol T-I. What chemical is T-I? A lot of bicycles are made out of this metal because it's so light. I'm guessing titanium? Titanium. Yeah. Got it, Juan. That's it, titanium. I saw the light bulb go off above your, above your head right next to that Christmas tree. Here we go. 25 points. Newton's law of motion states that a body in motion will continue to stay in motion unless an equal and opposite force acts on it. That is the way, reason why these two things in automobiles save lives. Um, name, emergency brakes? Name the two things in automobiles that are that opposite force that keeps you from flying through the window if you have a collision. Emergency brakes and seatbelts. Seatbelt. Seatbelt belt. Seat is one. What's the other one? Brakes. Airbags? Oh. Airbags. That's right. Seat belts oh, and right. airbags. Good. That is the opposite force. Good answer. 25 points. You needed those points. Let's go to the potpourri. Now, this is something you would never do. You would never disobey your father. A well-known astronomy magazine called Icarus is named for the mythological boy who was about your age who was given wings by his father. But Icarus, he didn't listen to dad. He flew too close to the sun, and since his wings were attached with this substance that accumulates in your ears and is used for making candles, he fell out of the Wax. sky. Wax. 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 Good. Five points. Fifteen points. Potpourri. Now you're going. To learn about your family tree, 
who your grandfather was, your great-grandfather, your grandmother, you could contact a company like 23andMe or one called Ancestry What, the molecule that actually encodes your body's entire genome. Three letters. Skin? What do you guys think? You think DNA? Three letter acronym. DNA? DNA, good, 15 points. 25 points, good. Let's show you a picture. Beautiful picture. Maybe, I don't think you've ever seen an insect like this. That's a leaf insect, its head is at the bottom. Well, you wouldn't believe it, but this insect and a stick insect, some of you have seen stick insects, they look like walking sticks, actually belong to the same species. In fact, one is a male and one is a female, and yet they look so different. Do we call that, this is a multiple choice, do we call it when the male and the female of a species look very different, we call it sexual variety, sexual isomerism, or sexual dimorphism. Variety, isomerism, or dimorphism, when they look different. Wait, do you guys think variety? I said variety was one, isomerism was another, and dimorphism was another. Okay, guys, so what do you guys think it is? Morphism? Variety? Like changing? Jonathan said it. Dimorphism is correct. Di means two. Morpho means body. Dimorphism it is. All right. Three more questions. Keep it up. Five points in dateline. The shortest day of the year, the one with the least number of daylight hours, occurs in late December. Winter solstice? The official start of winter. We call that day the what? Winter solstice. Winter solstice. Adiel, the head of the class, young man, you got it. Five points. Good. For 15 points in dateline. The current NASA rovers, those spacecraft on Mars, have names. One's called Spirit. One is called Opportunity. And the other one is a synonym for inquisitiveness, or the word that is said, the trait that killed the cat. What is it that killed the cat? It got too inquisitive. What's that word? Mm, what do you guys think? Uh, uh, so I got nothing so far. He's smart, right? Curiosity killed the cat. Yeah. Curiosity, Curiosity killed the cat. Last question for you in the game. Scientists in England say they have used AI, artificial intelligence, to solve the problem of how these chemicals, formed entirely of amino acids, get their three-dimensional folded shape. What kinds of chemicals are made entirely of amino acids? Your body is filled with them. Stomach um, acid. I, no, I can't. You think, you guys think it's stomach acid? I think it says juice. I, I, it's this type of juice. I, I think I remember hearing it before. No, science. Amino acids is kind of, a, might throw you off because it makes it sound like an acid is liquid. In this case, it's not. Amino acids are the building block of proteins. Proteins was your answer for 25 points there. All right, that means you end the game with 170 points. Not bad at all. Let's see if that holds up. It's now time to bring back the team from Whitehall and find out a little bit about these three outstanding young men. You saw them before, you know that they are disciplined students. They are great science students. Let's start with our captain, Brad. And Brad, tell us, is this experience sort of what you expected Science Bowl to be, even though we're not in the studio? Um, yeah, because um, it's fun. And then um, for me, it's kind of competitive because we both, um, tried, both teams try to answer questions. And of all, it's just really fun. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you're finding it so. And you told us earlier what it is you hope to do someday. Would you tell us again? Um, I want to be a software engineer. Yeah, why so? Um, so I could um, help people using the computer. Yeah. And people uh, need help with computers, uh, uh, people my age and people of any age. And if you can get them through, since computers are everything today, you're performing a great public service. Good luck in the rest of the game. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Hayden. Hayden, nice to have you here again. And tell us, uh, boy, you seem to know you're whip smart. You know all these answers. Uh, do you watch Jeopardy? Do you play games like this uh, in other ways? Or uh, how do you account for all of your knowledge? Um, I do sometimes watch Jeopardy, but I like to read books 
and have challenging conversations with my family. Boy, challenging conversations. Uh, that tells me everything. And the fact that you read tells me even more. People who read do extremely well on Science Bowl. You're exposed to books take you away and out of your world into places where you never were and oftentimes didn't even know existed. Well, you're playing a great game here today. And your future plans include? Um, I'm too young to understand what I do when I'm older, but... Um I'm looking at the challenges the world's facing now, and I really want to make a difference. Well, uh, something tells me whatever you choose, you're going to be successful at, and we're lucky that you're coming along, and you're doing a fine job here today, as I said. Keep it up. And the third member of the team over at Whitehall, and that would be uh, Jake. Jake, with he's got a headset on over there, and uh, Jake is uh, a great player as well. We'll bring him up in just a moment here, and we'll ask him a few questions about self too. All right, there you are, Jake. Jake, uh, we're really flattered that you have part of the Science Bowl board behind you there. You really went all in on this program here today. Tell us about your experience with Science Bowl. Uh, how did you prepare for this? Well, I was here, I was in Science Bowl last year, so I have a lot of knowledge about what goes on in Science Bowl. And absolutely, experience counts. And yes, I, I, gives me, and that's how I, yeah, you were frozen up there a little bit. We'll just uh, kind of wait it out here. Maybe you're, uh, we'll, we'll get it back on in a few moments here. And tell us about your future. What do you hope to do? I want to be an inventor when I grow up. I like to come up with ideas. And even though some of them are strange, I like coming up, I like giving myself challenges. So oh, I try to accomplish my strange ideas. Well, uh, ideas may be strange to you, but for other people, it may be like they say, build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. Well, somebody came up with that idea and it was probably pretty strange back then. But uh, yeah, I, I'm impressed with your, uh, your maturity and uh, the fact that you want to do something to help the world. And uh, so many inventions have done that, inventions that we take for granted, and uh, people like you have been behind them. All right, let's get back into the game here. Gentlemen, we have nine more questions for you. Let's get back to our gallery view, and uh, we go back to let's get physical. You guys ready? Yes? Cool. Here we go. Let's get physical for five points. The lead in a lead pencil is actually a slippery form of this element that in its hardest form is a diamond. Is it carbon? I think it's carbon. It is carbon, absolutely right, for 15 points. While most meteor showers are formed from the debris of comets, the gemited showers originated from Phaeton this year, one of these celestial bodies that orbits between Mars and Jupiter. An asteroid? Asteroids is right. That's the asteroid belt. And let's get physical for 25 points. Airplanes fly high above the clouds in the stratosphere, where it is much calmer than down here in this T-initialed layer of the atmosphere, where the weather can and does make for some very bumpy rides. Troposphere. Troposphere is right. You got it. All right, you ran the column there on the let's get physical. Let's go for let's, let's do potpourri for five points. Since the rest of the world uses the metric system, a perfect vision rating in a place like England is expressed as 6-6, six, six, since the eye chart is six meters away when read. Here in the United States, where we use feet instead of meters, perfect vision is expressed by these numbers. 2020? 2020. You see a 20 feet with the normal eye should see a 20 feet. Excellent. For 15 points. This is interesting. Scientists have found that discarded orange peels, the stuff you throw away, has the remarkable ability to extract this chemical element found in almost all the batteries we use in our electronic devices and symbolized by Li on the periodic table. Lithium? Lithium, that's right, those lithium ion batteries. Lithium? Lithium is right. What would we do without those lithium ion batteries? Everything we have, our phones, our computers. 
for 25 points in potpourri. While the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, are deciding how much COVID vaccine will go to each state. The vaccines first had to get the green light from the FDA, which stands for what? The Food and Drug Administration. Food and Drug Administration is correct for 25 points. Dateline for five. Applications to medical schools have skyrocketed this year. So many young people want to become doctors. It's a phenomenon being attributed to the respect and admiration for what rock star doctor who's been guiding us through the pandemic. Dr. Fauci? What do you think that is? Dr. Fauci, that's right. He even has his own little bobblehead doll now. The Dr. Fauci bobblehead. Good answer, guys. For 15 points. The Chinese space probe known as Chang'e is about to scoop up some soil from the moon. First time that's been done since 1976 when the Russians did it. Rock and soil from the moon are known as what kinds of L-initialed samples? Lunar samples? Lunar samples is right. Thank you, Hayden. Last question of the game. Let's see if you can get this one. To prime our immune systems to begin making antibodies against COVID, the new vaccines are going genetic. Using the messenger form of this three-initialed acronym, our body's key instructor for making proteins. RNA. That is messenger RNA. Thank you, Hayden. And that means a perfect game. One of the few times students have gotten every single one of our questions correct. You have 320 points. My hat off to you guys. Congratulations. What a game this was here today. We knew it would be a clash of the titans because both of these schools had won previously. And we are so impressed with all of the performances here today. Our final tally is Rogers Heights, 170, and Whitehall, a perfect game. 320 points, they got all those questions right. Let's have a round of applause for both Whitehall and Rogers Heights for magnificent playing here today. And uh, we hope you enjoyed being with us here today. You can see all of the people it took to make this happen. Yes, you saw the students, they did all the yeoman's work, but behind the scenes, the coaches, look at, the, if you could wave your hands, please. Mr. Pit Pit is here. Miss Rajiv from Rogers Heights, from Whitehall. Miss Chilcott is here. Mr. Booker and Miss Farmer, who is the former coach and now the principal of Whitehall, a former county champ. And you've taken one giant step closer to repeating as a county champ today, I must say. Congratulations to everybody and all of you that were watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. It was uh, a premier performance by some of Prince George's best. And from Science Bowl here and to all of you, happy holidays. I'm Dave Zarin, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.